Alrighty, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the FSU College of Education's Teacher Education Preview Day. Uh, my name is Jenny Kroger, and I'm the Communications Director here in the College of Ed. We're excited to have you with us today to learn more about our teacher education programs here at Florida State. So during today's session, uh, you'll hear from the 2021 and 2022 Florida Teachers of the Year who will share their stories. And you'll also hear from some of our faculty and staff who will provide information about our programs, admission requirements, and scholarships. So at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Krista Stanley, the 2021 Florida Teacher of the Year. Hello, I am so excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Krista Stanley and I'm the 2021 Florida Teacher of the Year. Um, so I'm from Okeechobee County and before being selected as the Florida Teacher of the Year, I taught sixth grade math for four years. Um, I did not go to school to be a teacher. I actually graduated from FSU in 2016 with a degree in business management. And my last semester up there, I realized that I wanted to be a teacher. And so I made the joyful decision to join our profession. Um, I'm actually a current student at FSU right now in the College of Education um, in the Educational Leadership Program to get my master's. So I'm so excited to be back at FSU, to be back home. And it has been just such a joy to be in the program and to continue learning and continue growing as a teacher and then as, a, as an educator. Um, so when I decided to be a teacher, um, my parents were both teachers when I was a kid and everyone told me that I was going to be a teacher. And I rebelled and did not go to school to be a teacher, but truly thinking back, I think I was always destined to be a teacher um, because it is the most amazing profession out there. We have the opportunity to change our students' lives every single day. I mean, we get to contact their families and get to um, see them grow up, um, to see our communities grow. And it is just the most exceptional, exceptional profession to be part of. And I'm just so proud to be a teacher. So now um, as a teacher of the year, you get to be on a sabbatical. And so I was on a sabbatical for a year and I got to travel the state. Um, and now I'm back at my school as an instructional coach and I get to support students and teachers. Um, so I'm continuing uh, my story of professional growth by going back to school at FSU. Um, but I just wanna share a quick story with you. And I sh I've shared this story throughout the state and with many educators about a student of mine um, whose name is Kaylee. And she was a student of mine my, the year before I was selected as the Florida Teacher of the Year. And Kaylee was a student who came in um, to my sixth grade math classroom and really lacked confidence in math. And what I had the chance to do as her teacher was to help her grow her math confidence and her mathematical ability. And so I got to see firsthand the impact that I could make on her success and to see truly my, my favorite part, her confidence grow in herself as a student and as an indiv individual. So I remember at the end of the year, um, she really struggled at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, I remember sitting at a table with her and watching her complete this multi-step math problem with so much confidence. And she was so proud of herself as she completed that problem. And I remember her looking up at me and, and asking, did I get it? And I was like, yes, you did. And just smiling with so much joy and pride. And the smile on her face is why I became a teacher and is why teaching is so important. It doesn't mean she has to be a teacher, but it means that I helped her become one step closer to finding her success and her joy in life, um, to making her feel confident as an individual and as a student. And so teaching is just the most rewarding profession. And it truly is an honor that as a teacher, we get to be part of our students' lives in our communities um, every single day that we enter our building. Um, so it's just so important um, to continue building our profession. And any time I get a chance or get offered the opportunity to speak to maybe future educators or, or students who are uh, aspiring to be teachers, I take it because I am only in my sixth year teaching. 
This is my sixth year in this profession. And to say that I was the Florida Teacher of the Year, that I am the, the 2021 Florida Teacher of the Year is just the most humbling and honoring thing I've ever had the opportunity to do. Um, but it's because I just find so much joy in this profession um, and what I get to do every single day. So, um, so exciting to be here today. I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to speak to you all. And if you have any questions, ask Jenny. She can give you my contact. Um, I would love to connect with you. So, so good to see you um, and enjoy the rest of this event. Alrighty. Thank you, Krista. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce our 2022 Florida Teacher of the Year, Miss Sarah Painter. Hi guys, everything Krista said, I second. It is um, the most rewarding profession to be in. You know, I often tell everyone the greatest thing about being a teacher is that it matters. But the hardest thing about being a teacher is that it matters every single day. My name is Sarah Painter. I am the 2022 Florida Teacher of the Year. I am a fifth grade teacher in Pinellas County with 19 years experience. So seeing Krista's journey and my journey, you see that no two journeys look exactly the same. I got my undergraduate degree from USF and then I got a master's from UF and I am now seeking a specialist degree in ed leadership from FSU. So I have saved the best for last. Um, to tell you a little bit about why I teach, I'm going to share a story with you about my student from last year, whose name is Calvin. So student results, academic and non-academic, are what give me joy and help me find joy in teaching. So Calvin helped me find joy while I was teaching through a pandemic. You see, Calvin came to our school as a second grader and with him came a reputation for being difficult. He had a file full of teacher notes. And as a second grader, it didn't take long for Calvin to end up in my fifth grade classroom for timeout. My principal asked me to mentor him that year and help him adjust to our school. Well, Calvin bounced around from teacher to teacher for the next two years, and they were growing frustrated with their efforts. By fourth grade, Cal and I knew each other pretty well. He'd come see me frequently, and he'd always ask, Am I going to be in your class in fifth grade? And I always assured him that I would make it happen. So by the end of fourth grade, I reached out to his fourth grade teacher and I asked for his mother's contact information. Knowing that I would be requesting him in my class, I wanted to be proactive and form a relationship with his family. So after introducing myself to his mother, we traded texts back and forth a few times Anything from school to parenting advice, we both had a son in the exact same grade at the time. And lo and behold, the 2021 school year began and guess whose name appeared on my roster. However, it was days before we started that mom called me and said that she didn't think he would be successful in a traditional public school setting with her concerns ranging from mask mandates to successfully socially distancing from his peers. And respecting mom's decision to put him in Florida virtual school, I assured her that if anything changed, I'd always have a spot for him in my room. Well, I think it was the fourth day of school and mom called and just said, we need you. That's all she had to say. So Calvin quickly pivoted from virtual school to being an online learner in my simultaneous learning environment. And he did well. He had no audience while learning from home. So his behavior wasn't a problem. He did his work, but it didn't take long for mom to see that Calvin was in need of some social interaction. So by second semester around January, we changed his learning option again. And Calvin transitioned to being a face-to-face -face learner. Well, the last half of the year did prove to be a bit challenging for Calvin. Academically, he struggled to engage with the content as it grew more rigorous and challenging. Unstructured times like recess, PE, lunch, art, music became areas of contention as he encountered social issues with his peers. He distracted the class and he craved for ways to gain attention. However, when our principal gathered, 
all of the fifth grade students together in the cafeteria for her farewell speech. She asked each student to write down one thing they learned about themselves this year. And it didn't have to be academic. You know what Calvin wrote? He wrote, I got nicer. And he did. This was the first year in three years that Calvin remained with the same teacher he started with. This was the first year that Calvin formed lasting friendships in the classroom with his peers. Calvin may not have made the academic gains we were looking for, but no one could argue about the growth he made socially. I never gave up on my drive to help Calvin be successful. And as evidenced by his end of year reflection, he didn't either. This is why I teach. The student outcomes make it all worth it. Like Krista said, if you wish to contact me or reach out, just email Jenny. She'll give you um, our contact information and we wish you the best of luck. I didn't plan on crying today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much um, to both of you for sharing those stories. Um, really powerful. Um, <laughs> Robin. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Mia Hines. Uh, she's our academic advisor for our teacher education programs, and she's going to provide some more information about our programs, um, admission requirements, scholarships, and all that good stuff. Mia? All right, thanks, Jenny. Those stories were amazing. Um, thank you, Sarah and Krista. Like, uh, I'm super crybaby, like I cried anything and I have a fifth grader. And so I, that just kind of warmed my heart. So thank you so much for sharing those stories. Um, this is why you all were the teacher of the year. <laughs> um, um, so I am going to talk a little bit about our programs, just give you a, a broad overview of all of our teacher prep programs. Uh, a little bit about admissions, um, and you all will get the opportunity to talk individually with each program of interest um, and current students as well. Uh, if you do have questions, you can drop them in the chat or ask them as we go along. Okay. So uh, this is um, a few of our programs. So first, I'm going to start off with our bachelor's master's. So we have five different areas in which students can earn a bachelor's and a master's in five years. Um, so we have elementary education, and you will be certified to teach grades K through six. You also get an ESOL and a reading endorsement. We also have English education. You will be certified to teach grades six through 12. You get an ESOL and a reading endorsement as well upon graduating from that program. We have social science education and you will be certified to teach grades six through 12. We have special education teaching and you will be certified to teach grades K through 12. You also have the opportunity to get an autism endorsement, ESOL and a reading endorsement. And lastly, for our bachelor's master's programs, we have a visual disabilities education program and you will get certified to teach students grades K through 12. If you take a look, uh, there's asterisks by English education, special education, and visual disabilities education. Those um, programs are considered critical shortage areas in the state of Florida, which means that we are always looking for more students to go into that area um, because we are really um, in need of teachers there. Other teacher preparation programs that we have at S FSU, Art education, uh, you would receive a bachelor's and a master's. Um, that program is housed in the College of Fine Arts. And upon graduating from that program, you can be certified to teach art grades K through 12. We also have our FSU Teach program, and there's two different areas. One is mathematics. Um, students graduate with a bachelor's from the College of Arts and Sciences and College of Education. And upon um, completing that program, you can be certified to teach grades six through 12. And we also have FSU Teach Science. Um, and you can choose an area. You can either choose biology, chemistry, earth and space science or physics, and you will be certified to teach grades six through 12. And lastly, we have music education, which is a bachelor's program as well, housed in the College of Music. And students um, 
that graduate from that program are certified to teach grades K through 12 in music. Also, there are two areas on, areas on this slide, uh, FSU teach math and science. Math and science are also considered critical sh shortage areas in the state of Florida. So we are once again, always looking for more teachers to go into those areas. In the College of Education, we also have an education minor. Um, it's 12 credits um, of education courses. You would have to take EDF 1005, EDF 2085, um, EDF 4210 is educational psychology, EDF 2082, um, or EDF 2040. Um, so there's 12 credits. Um, if you are interested, sometimes students want to um, do a minor. Uh, I should let you know that the minor does not lead to any type of professional cert certification. So if you are interested in teaching and going into the classroom, then one of our teacher preparation programs is the best. If you are interested in the minor, you do have to apply and that link will be in the chat for you. So our program at a glance, I'm gonna go over the BSMS programs for our um, FSU TEACH programs. When you go into the breakout rooms, Robin is going to give you more of an overview on how those programs work, okay? So for the um, bachelor's master's, there's a three-year program. So you would do essentially at Florida State your freshman year, sophomore year, or at a community college or another institution. And then you would start our program when you would be considered a junior. So junior year, um, we have a junior and a senior year. You graduate with your bachelor's degree uh, in education, and then you come back for one additional year of master's uh, coursework and graduate with a master's in that um, area. During the junior year, you are doing education coursework. If you are in a secondary area, you're also doing coursework in your subject area. Um, if you are, if your program has a reading and um, ESOL or TESOL um, certification, you are also probably taking some of those classes. And all of our students, as soon as they start the program in their junior year, they are doing early field experiences. So you are placed in schools and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later on in the presentation. During the senior year, we dive a little deeper into methods courses where they are kind of teaching you how to teach students, how to teach your subject area. Um, if you are a secondary student, um, you are also taking coursework, continuing with the coursework in your subject area, um, reading and TSL courses. Um, during the senior year, some of our students or all of our students in our program will start taking graduate coursework that will be able to be applied to your master's program. Um, and once again, you are also doing um, early field experiences. So we place you in the schools and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So like I said, at the end of your senior year, we have a graduation, you graduate with a bachelor's degree in um, your area, and then you come back for one additional year for your master's program. During that time, you are taking graduate coursework. You are a graduate student. Um, you are taking courses in research methods, um, all of our programs have a culture responsive course for our students. And then during that year, you're also doing a practicum. And then your very last semester in the program, you are um, participating in student teaching. And student teaching is a time where you are placed in a school. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And you are kind of taking over the classroom um, at some point fully. So that is our three year program um, for the BSMS. So field experience placements, I talked a little bit about that. So students are placed in the field on our program as soon as they start our program. Um, that is one of the um, great things about our program is students get a lot of field experience hours while they are in the program. The amount of hours that a student gets though does depend on the program that they are in. Um, students are typically placed in elementary, middle and high schools throughout the program. Um, in the following counties for your early field. So we work with Leon County, Wakulla, and we have placements in Jefferson. Um, and then during your internship, which is student teaching, your very, very last semester of the program, students can stay in the area in Leon County or any of these other um, surrounding counties, but students also will have the opportunity to um, go to other counties and districts in the state. Um, and we give students a list of approved um, counties. So we do place students all over the state during the student teaching semester. 
So why a master's degree? A lot of times students are um, thinking, well, some other programs are only a bachelor's degree. Why do I, why should I get a master's degree? Well, first of all, you earn a master's in one year. Most master's degree programs are between two and three years. So we give you the opportunity to earn it in one year. Um, there are several states that require teachers to have a master's degree. So while Florida, Florida does not require teachers yet, if you do plan on going to another state eventually, um, there are requirements for teachers to have a master's degree. Um, you are more prepared to um, have degrees in ed leadership and administration. Um, so it kind of leads you into that and ed education policy. So having the experience of graduate coursework and being in a graduate program really does prepare you for those other programs. It also might create leadership opportunities for you to become a curriculum specialist or a director of assessment or other areas that you might be interested in outside of the classroom once you get some teaching experience. Um, and depending on the county, you will be paid more than a student that just has a bachelor's degree. Um, so that is, those are all the benefits of, of getting a master's degree for each individual program. They might have additional benefits that they talk to you about in the breakout rooms. I know I'm moving kind of fast. Wanted to stop and see if there were any questions so far. Don't see any in the chat. Okay. All right. So this is just a uh, picture of some average salaries. I know a lot of times in teaching, I'm the teaching professor, I'm an educator, a former high school counselor, and um, there are many times I've been working in teacher prep for a while now, and students are like, I want to go into teaching, but teachers just don't get paid enough. And while we are still advocating for teachers to get paid more, um, as we know that they the jobs that they do are um, long, hard, and um, but so rewarding and exciting. Um, teachers are making a decent salary in the state of Florida. So these are some of the averages. Um, so the average um, teaching salary, starting off teaching salary for English and social science education are about $51,000. Uh, and then for special education and visual disabilities, the starting average teacher salary is around 53,000. So as you can see, um, it's not a large salary, but it is a salary that you can live off of. Um, and it is a decent starting salary. And there are other opportunities to increase your salary as you move along um, in your profession as you get more years um, under your belt. Some of the academic and social supports that we offer once you become a student in the program, um, we do one-on-one -on -one advising through OASIS. Um, so even before you're in the program, if you are interested, I do believe I saw Frank Amadon on, on, on the um, call here. And he is one of our um, advisors that works with students prior to getting into the program. Uh, so Frank and Bob, if you haven't met with them yet and you are interested in coming into one of our teacher prep programs, you definitely wanna do that. They offer one-on-one -on -one advising um, through OASIS for our students. Um, you also have access to take some prereq education courses. So um, EDF 1005, EDF 2085, EDF 1005 is intro to education and EDF 2085 is um, teaching diverse populations. Students that are interested in education can take those courses without actually being enrolled in the program. Uh, some other academic and social supports that you have available to you um, are organizations. So we have the Council for Exceptional Children. We have the Council of, and that is for students that are interested in special education, um, CEC. Um, we have Council of Teachers of English. Uh, we have Kappa Delta Pi, and that's the International Honor Society in Education. And we also have the Student Florida Educator Association, which is um, SFEA. And students can get involved in that. I know I'm pretty sure a lot of you see my emails. You can get involved in that as a freshman and a sophomore. And I am one of the co-advisors for that. So if you are interested, definitely get involved. We have one more organization that I've left off this slide and I know it is a visual disabilities organization. Dr. Bischoff, can you tell us what that organization's name is? It's F-A-E-R. So it's the floor, it's the Association for the Education and Rehabilitation of the Blind and Visually Impaired, which is why we call it AER or Florida AER. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bischoff. So also scholarships, we do offer our students scholarships um, 
while they are in the program. So the College of Ed offers over 400,000 scholarships annually to students. Um, the deadline usually is March. Students that are going to be applying this year for our programs, we'll talk about deadlines in a little bit, but if you are a student that is applying this year and you hopefully will be coming into our programs for fall 2022, you can apply for the College of Ed scholarships. Um, Jenny is going to drop that link for you in the chat. And if you are interested, I encourage you to apply. The deadline is March 7th, okay? Um, we also have the Florida Fund for Minority Teachers um, and it's FFMT. It's $4,000 a year while enrolled in the program. Students that, are, um, that meet this um, uh, requirement for this scholarship, they have to be considered a Florida resident. Um, you do have to identify as a student of color. Um, and you also have to, um, at the end of your teacher preparation program, you do have to um, work in Florida for a few years because you were given some um, financial aid. So you get that scholarship throughout all three years of your program. Uh, when you are enrolled into the program and when you begin, you will receive additional information. If you qualify for that scholarship, you'll receive additional information from me about that. We also have the TEACH grant and the TEACH grant is for students that are enrolled in teacher shortage areas. The TEACH grant is a national grant. Uh, it is a federal grant and is not just a state grant. Um, so teacher shortage areas, as I mentioned before, special education, English education, visual disabilities, and also math and science. So if you are a student that is interested in one of those areas and you actually apply and you are accepted into our program, you can apply for the TEACH grant next year. Uh, it does provide up to $4,000 annually. You must have at least a 3.25 GPA. Um, and then also Jenny is gonna drop the link into the chat because there is a service agreement. So if you do apply for that, you can read a little bit, or if you're interested in applying, you can read a little bit more about that um, grant. It is free money. So um, all of these opportunities on this slide, they're free, but you do have to apply for them. Um, so we do try to offer scholarships and different opportunities to our students every year. All right, so additional scholarship information. Some of you might already have some scholarships um, while you are a student here or at another institution. Um, and I just wanna kind of walk you through what you will still be able to use when you're a student in our program, whether it's in the bachelor's or the master's. So federal Pell Grant, some of you might be receiving a federal Pell Grant. You can still use that money when you are enrolled in the bachelor's portion of our program. Unfortunately, federal Pell Grant is not um, something that students can um, obtain during a graduate program. So you will not be able to use that. Florida Bright Future Scholarships, um, a lot of our students come in with that. You can use that obviously as an undergraduate student in the bachelor's portion of the program. But when you go into the master's portion or when you're taking graduate courses, um, that um, those funds are limited. I always encourage students to reach out to your Florida Bright Futures counselor or the office to kind of talk about what does that look like for you because every student situation is different. Florida prepaid, the same thing. You will receive those funds as an undergraduate student when you're in the bachelor's portion, but in the master's program, you do want to reach out and talk to them because those funds are limited. Um, Florida Student Assistant Grant, you can receive that during the bachelor's year, but you cannot receive that during the master's year. Um, the First Generation Matching Grant, once again, you can receive those funds during your bachelor's portion, but you do not receive those during the master's portion. Um, the FSU CARE grant for students that are in the CARE program, the CARE program does give you funding throughout the whole um, time that you are enrolled in the bachelor's portion of your programs, but when you become a graduate student, you will not receive any of those funds. And then the last scholarship is the FSU Freshman Admission Scholarship. You do receive that when you are in the bachelor's portion of the program, but not in the master's portion. So I wanted to show you this slide because going back to this one, all of these scholarships here, some of those scholarships that I just showed you, you notice that you don't get them when you're enrolled in the master's portion of the program. So it's really important for you to apply to some of these scholarships if you qualify, because all of these scholarships you can receive during the master's 
year and the bachelor's year of our program, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pause and see, are there any questions so far? I am going to talk about how to apply next. So how do you apply to our programs? So our admissions requirements first, you have to have a minimum of a 2.5 GPA. Uh, you must have at least 60 college credits, uh, which means you have satisfied the general ed requirements. If you are a student transferring from a, another institution or a community college, this also qual you also have to have at least the 60 credits, um, which typically is your AA degree. Um, you also must have EDF 1005 Intro to Education with a C minus or better. Um, we recommend you take EDF 2085, which can count as your diversity Y credit. It is not a requirement, but we highly recommend that course. For students interested in English education, you must have a English content course. So you can have either American literature, uh, e &L, or a lit course. And then for social science students interested in applying, you do have to have at least 12 credits of social science courses. Uh, and those have to be a C minus or better. Okay. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the FTCE general knowledge exam. For students that are interested in the bachelor's and the master's program though, this does not, um, this is not for you. So you do not have to take the general knowledge exam. If you are going to be applying to any of our programs with the bachelor's and the master's portion, you do not have to take the general knowledge exam. For students that are interested in math, music, or science education, you do have to take the general knowledge exam in order to apply to those programs. Um, that test is a four subject area test, English education, reading, math, and essay. You can take it year round, uh, Monday through Sunday. There are locate, there is a testing center in Tallahassee, but you can take it at other um, locations in the state of Florida. The test costs about $130 for all four subtests, or if you need to take individual ones, you can. Um, they're $32.50. Um, a passing score for each um, area, English, language, reading, and math is at least 200. And for the essay, you do have to get at least eight out of 12, okay? So once again, remember that if you are interested in math, music, or science or education, you do have to take this test. If you are interested in one of the bachelor's and the master's pro, um, programs, you no longer have to take the general knowledge exam, okay? Uh, if you are interested, you can register. I would say I would reach out specifically to those programs. If you are one of the programs where you have to take it, they might have additional support that they are offering um, or other ways for you to um, get some materials in order to study for the test. So application materials for BSMS programs. Um, so internal applicants, which means if you are a current student here at FSU, uh, the only thing that you need to do to apply as long as you meet all of the requirements is number one, fill out our online application. And Jenny is gonna drop that link in the chat. And along with the online application, there is an essay. Each program, depending on which program you are applying to, has an essay that students have to um, write and submit along with their application. If you are a transfer student, so if you are a student that is at a different institution, but you are planning to transfer um, to FSU and you want to also apply to one of our teacher prep programs, the first thing you have to do is you must apply to FSU and meet all of the requirements. Um, we will drop the transfer admissions link in the chat. You have to satisfy the world language requirement, which means that either you've taken two consecutive years of a world language in high school, and that is, um, you, that's evident from you providing your high school transcript, or you have taken at least um, two semesters of a world language in um, college, so a college credits of world language. Uh, you do have to submit all of your transcripts um, to the um, admissions office. Make sure you check before submitting it to FSU to make sure that all of your grades are correct and everything is um, looking the way that it's supposed to be. And that all of your courses um, on your transcript, so once you bring all your courses in, your um, all of your courses will get calculated into an FSU GPA. 
So once that happens, we will use that FSU GPA to determine uh, if you meet the qualifying GPA of 2.5 or higher, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is apply for the teacher preparation program. And that's the same application link that we put in the chat and then also complete the essays. So application deadlines. Um, so if you are applying to any of our programs for this year, you will begin our programs in fall of 2022, okay? Uh, elementary education deadline is March 15th. And so that's coming up, that's in a few weeks. Um, English education is April 1st. FSU teach math and science accept students twice a year. So if you are interested in coming in the fall, um, that deadline is July 1st. And if you wanted to apply for the spring, that next spring, that deadline is November 1st. Music education, same thing, two uh, admission cycles, July 1st for fall and spring is November 1st. If you are interested in social science education, that deadline is April 1st. Special education's deadline is April 1st. And visual disabilities education deadline is June 1st. Um, you must adhere to all deadlines. We unfortunately will not accept applications after the deadline. So if you know you're interested, you must apply by the deadline, okay? For more information, I saw that um, Frank Amadon, Mr. Amadon put his Calendly link in the chat. He is one of our academic, academic advisors that works with students along with Bob Birkin. Um, Mr. Amadon is also our person that takes care of admissions. So if you do have questions, you wanna talk to him about your courses, make sure you make an appointment with him. I am the academic advisor for students once they are actually enrolled in our BSMS programs. And so I will um, walk you through and help you and support you once you are enrolled in the program, but feel free to reach out to me as well if you have any questions. Um, I'll take questions now if anybody has any. Um, I will be quiet. Hi, oh, my name is Alicia. Um, I came late to the meeting, so I was wondering if the recording would be uploaded anywhere. Hi, Alicia. Yes, we will send that recording out to you um, at the end of the session, probably um, either sometime later on this afternoon. We'll make sure everyone gets that either this afternoon or tomorrow, okay? Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions about our programs or admissions? Okay, if not, I will turn it back over to Jenny. All righty, thank you, Mia. So at this time, um, I'd like some of our program faculty who are here to sort of give a brief overview of their programs uh, before we open up our breakout rooms for more specific info. Um, so let's see who's here. Um, Arzu, do you want to go first and talk about elementary ed? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Arzu Dosas. I'm teaching faculty in elementary education program. I have been teaching all the reading endorsement courses, and we have a lot of field uh, practicum courses. I think Ms. Hynos gave a uh, detailed information about the admission and everything, and I have we have great faculty in our program. Once we have the breakout room, I have a PowerPoint I will share with our uh, whoever is interested in our program. And as uh, Mia said, we have um, the deadline March 15. So I will give you uh, more details about our program if you're interested in elementary education. And we are K 12 reading endorsed and ESOL endorsed. And you can teach in middle school reading or you can teach um, in, in elementary schools. We have a lot of uh, courses uh, field based, we have a lot of practices, skill based courses. So, um, yeah. Um, We'll talk more if you come to our uh, breakout room. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Avex for English education, uh, Dr. Blake Tenori. Hi everybody, I'm Blake Tenori. I lead the English Ed BSMS program here. Um, like you heard through our program, you'll be certified to teach grades six through 12 English language arts, along with getting your reading endorsement, K-12 reading endorsement and your TESOL endorsement, which are required. Um, for ELA teachers in the state of Florida. 
Uh, and I'll share a lot more detail in the breakout rooms, but I just want to say that, you know, over the course of three years, we kind of, we ground our thinking about English education in principles of social justice. Um, we think a lot about how things like race and gender and um, other kinds of identities matter in language learning and text production and how we read and how we write um, and how we help others learn to do that. So I look forward to speaking with you more in the breakout room. Thank you. Um, up next for special education, we have Dr. Stacy Hardin. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Stacy Hardin. I'm the program leader for special education. Uh, much like many of the other programs, uh, you are in a practicum setting every semester. So you get to work with kids every semester, uh, just like uh, the other programs that you'll see. But what's special about special education, because we are the best program, contrary to what others, others may say, we are the absolute best. And we and I work with the best faculty um, who have expertise in all types of areas, including autism, early special ed, early childhood, or early childhood special education, uh, also reading, uh, math, all kinds of areas. When you leave us, you will be absolutely prepared to teach reading, you will be reading indoors, K-12. You will be able to teach students with autism. You will get your autism endorsement. You'll also get your TESOL endorsement. And for special education, you are certified to teach K-12. So, so from the littles all the way to the bigs, you will be able to teach them. We also give you a lot of uh, experiences with students who are transition age. And so those are your students who are 18 plus all the way to 22 and you are able to teach them as well. And so we give you all types of practicum experiences um, in our program. And I would love to talk to you more about this in breakout rooms. Thank you, Dr. Harden. Um, I'm next for our visual disabilities education program, Dr. Eileen Bischoff. Um, that is a hard act to follow, Dr. Harden. That was, that was very enthusiastic. So I am Eileen Bischoff. I am the program leader for the visual disabilities program. So um, following on what Dr. Harden said, we also prepare you to work with children who have disabilities. However, um, we uh, specifically train you in how to work with children who have visual impairments. So those who are blind or who have low vision. And uh, we, so we prepare you to become teachers of students with visual impairments. And um, in this role, you would not be the primary academic teacher. Uh, you would be teaching the expanded core curriculum. So we work more on helping children who have visual impairments to become independent and uh, to do things like make their own lunch and tie their own shoes and um, to seek careers and family life and recreation and leisure that they wanna participate in. So I would be happy to talk with you more about that in the breakout room. Thank you, Dr. Bischoff. Uh, up next, we have Dr. Robin Smith with our FSU Teach program. Hi, um, welcome everybody. Um, so the FSU Teach program is a bit different. Um, while it is uh, listed as only a bachelor's program, it is a double major. So you earn your first major in your math or your science discipline. So it could be mathematics or chemistry, physics, biology, um, environmental science. And then you get a second full major in education. So your degree comes from both colleges. And um, while we do have the application deadlines that Mia mentioned, we, um, we really recruit our students starting in their freshman year. So they take a prerequisite course, it's one credit. And in that course, students are actually taught some very um, basic um, strategies for instructing, such as classroom management and how to get your students' attention, um, managing, managing your materials. And you and another student get to pair up and teach a math or science lesson in a school here in town. So as a freshman, you get to try out the profession of teaching, find out if you enjoy lesson planning and working with students and helping students understand um, new science or mathematic concepts. And um, so it's just a prerequisite course. You have not committed to the program yet, but it is a way to start working um, towards that double major um, right off the bat. There are, um, there's one more prerequisite course. And then starting in the third course, you 
um, start preparing for the application to the School of Teacher um, Education and to educator preparation. So you start that in your sophomore year so that by the time you are in the School of Teacher Education with your second major, you already have four courses um, towards that second major under your belt. So that's sort of FSU Teach in a nutshell. All righty, thank you. And uh, Dr. John Myers is our program leader for social science education. He couldn't make it today. So if you are interested in social science, head on over to the English Ed breakout room. And Dr. Tenori will be happy to talk to you about both of our secondary programs. Um, so at this time, I will open up the breakout rooms and you should be able to choose whichever room you would like to go to. So feel free to go explore. If you have questions uh, for us, you can hang out in the main room. Otherwise, we'll see you back here later.